The other morning, uh, I was uh, really seeking the Lord for direction. First of all, is Lord, I need to hear your voice. Just a word from you that will prompt me and stir me and get me started in the right direction. And I listened for a while. And I wasn't hearing in the time frame that I wanted to hear. Nobody's ever been there, have you? And part of the reason was I wasn't hearing was there was a lot of noise in my head. There were a lot of deliberate, intentional distractions and diversions. And that's always the attempt, the attempt of the enemy is to distract and divert. Because if he can distract and divert, he can also abort the development of what's been seeded. Uh, the Prohibit that which has been received and conceived from coming to full maturity and being birthed, being brought out. You know, there's a point in time where it, it's exciting to know that you're pregnant. Then it gets a little bit more laborious, doesn't it? To the point that towards the end, right there near the time to deliver and to bring forth that which you've carried, nurtured, and believed for, and have an expectancy here as well as an expectancy here. Knowing that the plan of God is that you're not supposed to just keep on carrying. Okay? You're supposed to deliver. At the appointed time. You know? then there's a lot of things that can occur during the process of that to divert and distract and to take away the joy and or the fixed expectation that the expectations that are in right standing with God shall not be cut off because that's what God says. The things that you're pregnant with that have their uh, birth and their origin from God if you'll hold fast to them, there is an appointed time. You just keep nurturing it. Okay? You just create an environment to incubate and to bring forth. The time of delivery is up to the Lord. And right towards the end, think it not strange that all of a sudden pain is introduced and discomfort. And all sorts of things whereby you might even look at the person that seeded that in you. And I'm not just talking natural with some disdainment. You know. We do that towards the Lord some of the times. Because you don't really understand the 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 that that. Uh, as soon as Zion travails, you will bring forth. And the ideal plan of God is that not just a child, but a promised child. Okay? Anything that's birthed in your life that came from the seeding of the Word of God, a promise unto you is a male promise excuse me, a male child of promise. Amen? It's an image of God. It's an aspect of the likeness of God. And think it not strange, I was out, I hear Pete say this, and I've heard him say it off and on for years, I've never really had it happen to me, but I did Saturday. And you go, wow. No, you'll go, well, what was all? You know, what's the big deal? I was out mowing. And I heard God speak. Yeah, that doesn't usually happen to me. I usually hear the mower. <laughs> you know, but I heard God speak. And you know, the exciting thing about that is I think, uh, 
God's always, always the same. Right? And he's always doing this, like, come up here. Do you know, like, like a daddy would, a father would, because he knows this is a safe place for you. You understand? This is a safe place for you. And, and so it's like, come up here. You know, Isaiah said it as well as it can be said in Isaiah 55. And, and I'll be brief because you've heard it many times, but that's okay. We'll stir up your pure mind by the way of remembering, putting back together what you've heard. Scripture says in Hebrews, uh, take heed to the things that you've heard from the Lord unless you let them slip or you casually lay them aside and don't systematically, routinely, and deliberately pick them up. Okay? So where was I? Thank you. Y'all are being attentive. And that's what the message is essentially about this morning. Yeah. Stars. Okay? For that group. <laughs> uh, so in Isaiah 55, the Lord through the prophet said, You know, my thoughts are not your thoughts. In other words, hey, you know what? <laughs> I've noticed something. You guys don't think like me. And, and that ain't working for your good in, in, in a nutshell. So he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts and your ways are not my ways because the principle is there inherent in just that statement. As a man thinks, so is he. Okay? Thoughts produce behavior. Information produces thoughts and thoughts produce actions and behavior. Right? It's a domino effect. You don't just do something without having had a thought about it. So the, guy, so the Lord goes on and says, my thoughts are higher than yours, so my ways are higher than yours. So guess what? I'm going to do something about it for you. Not to you, but for you. Because God doesn't do two, he does four. And with that discrepancy of how I choose words to say that, it has to do with whether you're willing to cooperate or not. He doesn't force it. Right? He just makes it available. Come up here. Okay? E even with that invitation, we can choose not to arise. We can choose not to be lifted up. We can choose not to ascend to the Most High. Okay? You're in the world, but you're not of it. Right? What are you of? I'm of my homeland where my birthright is established. Okay? And I'm a representative here, a foreigner in this land now, declaring the goodness of God right here in the land of the living. That's my purpose. All right? So he says, I'm going to send my word just like the rain comes down from above and falls on the earth and forces it to burst forth and produce and seed to come forth and produce. I'm going to send my word, okay, so that it will be sown into your heart so that your thinking will change if you'll cooperate with it. And how long does it take to renew a mind? A lifetime. A lifetime, doesn't it? Romans 12, 1 and 2. Don't be conformed to this world. Well, willfully make that choice to begin with. Because it's leaven. You know what leaven is? Okay? Leaven in and of itself is not bad. We don't even use that word today in our culture, but we need to understand it because it's present. It's always present. The, Kingdom of darkness has it. Kingdom of God has it. 
Jesus said the kingdom of God is likened to leaven. When it's introduced into your life, it's the smallest ingredient. But it has the capacity to let God arise. You know, it's like yeast. It makes things rise. And what it actually does is it modifies or transforms as it's introduced into any. Whether it's bread or whether it's you, whether it's your thoughts or my thoughts. It has the capacity to modify and transform. So he says the kingdom of God is like leaven. When you allow it to be introduced into your being, it will start as a small thing, but it will crowd out everything else. Such that you can say, like Jesus, towards the end of his earthly ministry, he said, the prince of this world... He comes, you know, it's just about time for him to be captured, taken to his mock trials, beaten, go to the cross and be brutally killed, die, be buried. And he says, I know the prince of this world is coming, okay, but he doesn't have any place in me. None of that leaven has been allowed. Okay, and he told his disciples, beware the leaven of the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Okay, because what they'll introduce into your life will modify and transform your thinking contrary to the truth. But it still has the same power. So you choose what you're going to allow to be introduced into your thinking and it will either work for the kingdom of God in you or it'll work against you and the kingdom of God. Right? That's a powerful thing. Leaven. I had a guy in, in man church who is a new convert to the Lord and he's 72 years old. got led to the Lord by my grandson, who at the time was 10 years old. Ain't God amazing? He is relentless in his pursuit that none perish, not a one. He will follow you all the days of your life, wooing you with his relentless, unconditional incomprehensible love that only a heart that is drawn by the Spirit of God could say, yes, I seize that. I'll lay hold on that which is being offered into me. Okay? So anyway, he posed a question. Never read through the Bible before. Never read the Bible before. He's asking me a question about why, why did God tell them so many times, don't eat leaven in your bread, eat unleavened bread. And I go, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> you know? Okay. And he was talking particularly about in Exodus chapter 12, I think it is, when it, the Passover was introduced. You know, God was saying, you know, do prepare this lamb, do it this way, do it this way, do it this way, just like Leviticus, just like Jesus. Okay? Make sure it's without spot, without blemish. Take it into your household, consume it all. You know, have your clothes on, have your feet on, or shoes on. Okay? Have your staff in your hand. Have the blood over the doorposts and the lentils and the frames. Because the death angel's coming through and he's going to destroy the firstborn in every household and in, out of every livestock. But he will pass over where there is the blood. The deliverer, the rescuer, the savior through the blood of the lamb never changed. Still the same. Amen. But they were to eat unleavened bread. Leaven also, when it's introduced, adds flavor. It actually makes it sweeter, makes bread sweeter. 
That's why we like it. That's one reason. Because it's sweet. Who doesn't like a good old yeast roll? You know? God, especially when you put butter and honey on it, Scott, right? Okay? So, you know, what the Lord showed to me was, here's the select of God. Select because they now have applied the blood. Because they escape the destruction. You understand? It's the blood that marks. So, but think about the heart of God. Destruction's going on out here. They're escaping. They're safe. They're secure. But God doesn't want them eating in absolute pleasure and joy without some consciousness of the seriousness that's happening to, happening to those who do not have the blood applied. You know? And even when we eat the bread, the Word of God, Jesus said, I'm the bread. You think that, that you know, the real bread was manna that God gave you in the wilderness through Moses, but I'm telling you, I'm the bread that came down from heaven. I'm the living bread that you can eat from and never hunger again. Okay? And I won't always present my word and my bread to you as, oh, that was so cool. That just excites me, man. I feel better about myself. You know? It's just not always that sweet to the taste to begin with, is it? We know that is it inherently not mixed with anything that would ever deceive you or mislead you or make its appeal to you according to the sensory or the senses or the emotions or the flesh that goes straight to the heart of things. Amen? That's the way the Lord works. Always. Never makes his appeal to the flesh. But when he goes to the heart, it hurts the flesh, doesn't it? Okay? But it is leaven. It is leaven. The thoughts of God, the words of God, it's leaven. It will modify. It will transform you in your thinking and thereby produce a different individual. Right? And how long do I need that? Everybody answer. For your own benefit. How long do I need that? Y'all ain't as excited about it as I am. You know what? And you know, that's the only way I know to describe it. I'm, I, I am a spirit. I do have a body, so there's... There's still some restraint on the spiritual side of it, but I'm trying to get outside of it, y'all. So you hear the message of the faithfulness of God. See, your stinking thinking will sit there and say, you know, I've heard this message before. Well, good for you. You'll probably hear it again. Right here in this house, out of this guy and whoever else is listening to God. Do you understand? Because attention, attention is not just the capacity to hear. It's not just acknowledgement or recognition. In the realm of the Spirit, on both sides, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light, it is territory. That's contended for all the time. It's all about occupancy and rulership and dominion and whoever and whomever and whatever has a voice. It's always a voice that is issuing forth and has influence. That's what influence means. An outflow. Okay? 
And the Lord says time after time, and Proverbs chock full of it, but chapter 4, beginning with verse 20, he says, my son, this is not generic specific. You understand that? My son, my daughter, attend unto my words. When you look that word up, it means to prick up your ears. Well, God gave me some big ones that I've really not been crazy about most of my life. But they're there. And so he finally showed me, I gave you some big spiritual ears, boy. Use them. Amen. So I pretty much don't care about the ears on the side of my head. But I do remember years ago, years ago, sitting at the house, trying to prepare myself for church. We were going to, I'm talking years ago, probably at least 30, maybe longer. And I was just, I was, I was talking to the Lord and I said, Lord, you know, if I were to have to have a choice as to whether I wanted to, uh, and I'm just, you know, talking to the Lord like I would you, like I am to you right now. I said, if I had to make a choice whether I was going to lose my sight or lose my hearing, which, would it, which should it be? And it didn't, yeah, it didn't take long for an answer. It was sight. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by. Somebody tell me. Hearing. The church, tell me. The body of Christ, right? Faith comes by hearing, right? And you know, faith is defined in Hebrews chapter where? What verse? <laughs> Thank you. Chapter 11. What's it say? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things what? Not seen. Okay? Jesus, when he was raised from the dead, came back and was seen by over 500 people for over 40 days in his resurrected, glorified state. Appeared to his disciples, and I'm going to paraphrase it, but I'm almost certain this is the way he means it, and it hadn't changed, because in his earthly ministry, he blew the religious tra tradition and ways of men that he said, your traditions make the word of God and I am the word of God of no effect in your life. But what if some don't believe? Isn't that always going to be that way? So this is a personal individual thing. If you want to call our pursuit of knowing him a thing, you understand? What if some don't believe? Does that make the Word of God any less effective for those who do? God forbid. Isn't that amazing? Because for so long in our development and our maturing in the things of God and growing in faith in, in the Word of God and hearing and doing the Word of God rather than just being hearers, we begin to realize I don't have to look to the right or my left for confirmation when I've heard God speak. Do, do you understand the liberty in that? Okay. Does it, mean, does it mean that I won't go to a brother or a sister that I know believes likewise and can get in faith with me because there's power in that? Right? Stay with me. Don't leave. Okay? Attention is something that's always contended for. Right here, right now, it's going on. Which way are you going to yield? I've been there, I've sat back here before and thought, come on, Pete. <laughs> Nobody else? Yeah, everybody else does that from time to time. I, mm, I know better. I know better. Okay? So, what if some don't believe? 
doesn't change this thing going on between me and the Lord. All right? God forbid if that made a difference. Oh, there's some people who don't believe. Yeah, but I do. Yeah, but I do. I have my request in, Lord, my petition. And I'm not being arrogant. I'm not being demonstrative. I am doing what you said I could do, which is my birthright through grace. I don't deserve this, but it's mine. What a foolish person not to lay hold on what's mine. And know that it's, it's, I can never earn it. I can never deserve it. But I can take it with humility and pleasure and joy and boldness and confidence in knowing that God said, you come boldly before my throne of grace and find mercy and help in time of need. And how stupid it is of us to think, well, I'm not in need. Oh, really? Come on, Pat. I can't even take a breath on my own. I can't go to bed and lie down and rest without God giving me rest. Yeah, physicians can give you a pill when you can sleep, but you can't rest until things are right between you and the Lord. David said, I will not go into my house. I will not lie down on my bed. I will not close my eyes and seek my pleasure and my comfort until there's a place of rest of the Lord on the inside of me. I can't. It's unachievable. So what do I, what do I need to do? Obey the Word and enjoy the benefits and share them with others and become a a, a, an object of jealousy from those who are not in covenant. Yeah, that's the right way to use that. Okay? Because they look and they see, especially when they say, I know where they're living. I know the struggles they're going through. I know the pain. I know that it's not all well. But I keep hearing them say, It's well. It's well. Because I shut the door to the lie. I shut the door to that which has force, but it does not have the authority. Why? So that many naysayers and onlookers might see the demonstration of the spirit and power that God produces when there's faith there. So he walked into the room with his disciples after he'd been raised from the dead. And he said, just like he said to the religious leaders earlier, you have heard it said of old. You've read throughout the Old Testament. You've taught it and you know it. But I'm saying into you, okay, it's a new day, a new covenant. Hebrews chapter 1 says, God who in diverse, in, in times past and in diverse manners spoken to us through His prophets, now speaks unto us how? Through His Son, who is the express image of God. And He upholds all things. How? Somebody answer it for me. Louder. All right. He upholds all things by the word of His power. Okay? Now, you know, God didn't just have things written. Now, let's put that in there. It's missing a little something. Let's put that in there. I got to get this book out. You with me? God doesn't work that way. Does he? All Scripture is given by what? Inspiration of God. And what does that mean? It's got the breath of God in it. God breathed on Adam and he became a living what? Spirit. Jesus said the words that I speak in John 6, 63, not just those, but that's where it's recorded. The words that I speak there. Somebody said, don't be timid. 
Spirit and life. You know, I sat in a doctor's office with my wife Thursday. And I saw a man who is highly skilled, highly trained, highly educated, multiple, multiple degrees. And a good man. Right? But what he was felt obligated, and that's what he said, I need to share with y'all. He was so taken back. He was so off guard. He was so unsure. He had no confidence, no passion. He was weak as he could be. You could see it on his face and in his words. There was no forcefulness. There was no confidence. There was no power. You know why? Because it didn't arise out of the truth. It did not have the breath of God in it. And he was sitting in the presence of the images of God. Am I being boastful and proud? Not about who I am or who she is, but about whose we are. Whose we are. Remember I said God spoke to me while I was mowing? Well, that's a miraculous thing. I'll leave that alone. But I'm out there mowing and all of a sudden I hear this. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by what? Not by sight. Let's establish that because I've kind of been around several different directions. But we're talking about attention. And we're talking about the fact that which is better to have, sight or hearing? It's hearing because faith comes by hearing. And I cannot live this life as God intended, purposed, and provided for me to live for others without faith in God's Word. And I can't have faith in an increasing, growing manner without the capacity to hear God speak. Right? So what will I need to be doing for the rest of my life? Listening for the voice of God. What is the voice of God? And Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And what is His voice? The Word. The Word. So I'm mowing in the Word I hear. In the midst of all the noise and all the distractions of the mower in my body, God speaks. You know, and that's amazing because you think about the, the uh, acuity of hearing and the finite sensitivity that God gives us when uh, there's a lot of noise. You know, and I said part of it's my body. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's a push mower. I ain't riding, y'all. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> See, I'm seriously. It's, all this is going on. And I'm probably thinking, why do I have to do this all the time? Why don't I pay somebody to do this? But I know why I do it, because God wants to keep me moving. All right? So, anyway, I hear God. And, it, and here's what the Lord talked to me about. And I've not been studying this recently. But I've made the deposit so God can make a withdrawal. You understand? If you don't have anything in your account, there's nothing for Him to work with. That's why we have to keep familiarizing ourselves with the Word. That's why we have to deliberately, intentionally know that the enemy wants our attention and it is territory that's being contended for all the time. And I will not give up territory to the enemy. I will not. I will not to. And I can't just cast out a negative thought that's contrary to the will of God. I got to bring something else up that'll fill that space. You understand? So I heard the Lord say, you remember when I told Moses when the children were in the wilderness and they were thirsting and they started doing their moaning and complaining God, I wish we were back in Egypt. At least we had something to drink. You know? You brought us out here to die. And 
And God spoke to Moses. He said, you know that staff I put in your hand that is a symbol of my authority that I've given to you? You go and take it and you smite the rock. One time. Right? And what's it going to yield? Water. Okay? Now you know, Scripture tells us in Romans that whatever was written in earlier times, well, you know, Boy, that just blows the thing totally out of the water when people say, well, the book was written, it was written so long ago, it's not relevant anymore. You know? <laughs> Scripture says, whatever was written in earlier times, that's from Genesis to Revelation, was written in earlier times, was written for our learning. Okay? That we through patience... And comfort in the scriptures might have hope. Okay? So, he said, you remember when Moses was told to strike the rock one time and it would yield water? Okay? He said, do you also remember that Moses didn't get to literally go into the promised land? Okay? That God told him at the end of his life, that God had determined like He has with you and with me. God has determined it. He said, <clears throat> sorry, keep you hopping back there. <laughs> I just looked at him and saw him go, he <laughs> can't, can't jump with that guy. Uh, <laughs> He said, Moses, come up here with me on the mountain. I'm going to let you and I go look into the promised land. I'm going to let you see it. But you're not going to get to go into it. Because you struck the right rock twice. Right? And in that, to me, you marred the image of God. When God told Moses to strike that rock one time, that was a foreshadowing of Jesus, the rock, who would be stricken one time and living water would be produced out of that. One time. He does not need nor will he ever make himself a sacrifice again. Putting an end to all sacrifice. Living water pours out of him. Okay? God said, I don't take marring the image of God lightly. Even Moses didn't get to enter in because of he marred the image. Anytime, tell me this, everybody that can in faith answer this question, okay? Who are you in the earth? Say it. Don't be timid. I'm a representative. I'm a, a, Genesis 1.26. The Godhead speaks, the plurality of God, all in absolute harmony, were then always will be. Let us make mankind in our image and after our likeness. Okay? So you and I, the body of Christ with Him as the head, are the image of God in the earth. You're the Jesus that they're looking for. Isn't that right? Somebody say, Amen. Okay? We're talking about attention. I'll call you to it every once in a while. You remember the expression in the military? And I'm going to deviate just a second and I'll get back there. ooh -ah! I heard a guy not long ago and I'll share it with you again because I heard it again this morning. Do that. Let the people hear it. ooh -ah! Then it give you cold chills when you hear it because you know that's coming out of a group of men who've been called and they're totally convinced and persuaded they have one mission, that's to kill the enemy and save your life. I'll put my life in jeopardy and peril so that you might live if that's what it calls for. No questions asked. No, don't, no, don't send me on that mission. I'm not ready. It's not convenient. Forget about convenience. Be instant in season. You don't know when the enemy's raising his ugly head. You just know he will. That's why Ephesians chapter 6 says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. 
that you might be able to stand against the wiles, the trickeries, the insidious, pernicious ways of the enemy that he starts little like leaven and he can modify and transform until you eat. Don't even recognize yet that he's been on the premises. Unless your sensory perceptors are so acute that by the Spirit of God you know that's contrary. Get out! Before it takes root. Do you understand? Aggressive, vigilant, not towards the individuals, but towards darkness. I know where that came from. Doesn't matter who it came through. Jesus did the same thing with one of his most beloved, Peter. Peter just been swelled with pride. God, anywhere you want to go, I'm your man. You know? Same man said, you're not going that way. Not if I can do anything about it. Not by the way of the cross. Jesus immediately addressed that thing. Satan, get behind me. Okay? Not a time to be soft. Not a time to take comfort and be at ease. This is not the hour. This is not the day. How pitiful it is for people who don't recognize the hour and the day. It's serious. It's death and life. So, I told you there's so much. And that's not me, that's him. There's just so much. But it's all about who am I, what am I, who am I making room for? Ooh, I heard, Lord. I understand. And now I'm acknowledging it. I'm stepping forward. I heard. And I understand. Because you, you don't want to just speak to me. You speak to me and give me understanding. And then am I accountable? Then am I privileged? Okay? To step forward. I, I remember years ago... When, I'm talking years ago when I was playing football in high school, I had some tremendous coaches. Just tremendous coaches. But a defensive coach and I was playing defensive linebacker and when I finally got mature enough that I wasn't a pansy, <laughs> that I wasn't afraid about getting hurt. Now, you, some of you are not going to get this, but it's football, okay? And it's also the kingdom of God. Okay, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. First John says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy and undo and loosen the works of the enemy so that God might get to glory. You know, his disciples didn't understand that. They were with Jesus in an earthly ministry and they're walking along and they see this guy crippled and lame and whatever it was. He was infirmed by the enemy. Okay? He was not in wholeness as God had created and designed him to be. The perpetrator was there on site and it was manifested. And they said, uh, you know, who sinned? That this has happened in this guy's life. God said, you don't understand. This sickness is for the glory of God. And people still don't understand that. They go, whoa, my sickness is to give glory to God. Not your sickness, your healing. Your wellness, your restoration, your recovery. Okay, can I stand up here? Because we've had losses in this house, y'all, in this family. And I hate it with a passion. And you have suffered it most intimately. I hate it for you. But I'll not stop declaring the truth that I believe. And I've been before the Lord. And I've said, God, if I'm deceived, if I've been misled, if I'm in error, God, show me. 
This is what I believe. And the spirit of truth you gave me, Lord, lives on the inside of me. He has not in any way given me indications that that's not the truth. Proceed, son. You know what I'm saying? I can't undo what's been done, but I can't stop and not move forward. And I'm going to. I'm going to hear the voice of God. I'm going to listen to the voice of God. I'm going to stand in His presence or on my face and I'm going to say, Ooh, I heard. I understood. I'm at attention. Now I'll acknowledge it by a lifestyle that lines up with what I've heard and what I've understood. And I will not be afraid of the people. Whether they like it or don't like it, that's not on me. Like Ezekiel. We'll read it. Not this morning. Relax. There's so many places where the Lord says, attending to my word. I'm spitting all over myself. <laughs> Football coaches. That's where I was. I was playing defense. And I finally got to a point that I knew what that, that was about. You hurt somebody. You take somebody out. Now, I told you when I say that, I'm not going to take time for people to say, oh, I just don't like the way he's talking. Do you know? And I don't want anybody literally and physically to be hurt, but I want the enemy hurt. I want him stopped in his tracks. I don't want him advancing onto my turf. So my defensive position has assumed an offensive mindset. I'm moving forward. I'm taking territory. Do y'all understand that? Okay. So what if somebody says, well, look over there on the sidelines. It looks like, you know, according to the markers, you've lost some ground. Well, guess what? New day. Game ain't over. How many of you want to believe that way? Well, a couple. And all the rest of you, I understand. You know. Okay? You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, uh, for us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner are of many in the last days, but to do it so much the more as we see the day approaching. What day? The evil day. Where, where there, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing teachings that they prick their ears up to. Okay? So he says, preach the word. Preach the word. So that it's not just a form of religion. Empty. Barren, non-producing, but it's full of life. The Word of God and the Spirit of God. And it provokes, it provokes, it prods. It won't let you sit in your seat unresponsive. You know, Jeremiah said, you know, <laughs> Lord, I am tired of being your whipping boy. Everywhere I go and speak your Word, I catch a lot of trouble and pain. And I'm mocked and ridiculed and disgraced. Nobody can take you from the grace of God unless you let them. And the only thing that can take you from the grace of God, and that's a teaching in and of itself, you know how you fall from grace? You get caught up in works. That's exactly what he said. You did run well. Who's hindered you? This persuasion didn't come from God, but it is a persuasion. 
that'll get your attention if you give place to it. Well, if God do this, if God do that, God will love me more. God will give, give me more favor. God will answer my prayers. No. God's all those things for you already. Okay? So, one of the things that they taught me, boy, y'all really going to have to work on your attention because I jump around. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just have finally had to settle that I, you know, I'm not a systematic teacher. Okay? But I do know this. Spirit of God's on me. And the Word of God's in me because God's been faithful. So glean. Okay? But, so, I'm playing defense, and one of the things the uh, defensive coach taught me was that, you know, being a linebacker and standing here over between a, a guard and a tackle, he said, uh, you watch through the head of that guard to that backfield. Okay? Don't you be looking anywhere else. Those are your cues. You keep your eye focused there. And if that guard in front of you, rather than firing it out directly at you to block you, steps down the block, okay, somebody's coming through that hole. Do you understand? Somebody's coming through the hole. Well, guess what? I'm standing right there in that hole. You know, and that may be a, a big old bruiser. And he got the ball, y'all. <laughs> you know? And he's got a head of steam, and this guy's blocked down. And, you know, the natural tendency, if this guy in front of you goes that way, is for you to go with him. But he said, no, don't do that. Go right off his tail and get up in there and fill that hole. Because something's coming through there that you need to take care of. There's a breach in the wall, y'all. Okay? And now, once I learned that, I thought, oh, this is so cool. Because I know it's coming. And I've trained in times of peace, so I won't bleed during a war as severely. <laughs> I did bleed some. But there's nothing, nothing more exhilarating in an aggressive type sport like that to be trained, okay, and enabled and thoroughly furnished to do what you need to do when the demand's made on you. So you step in there and you fill the hole and you make the tackle. And everybody goes, yeah, yeah, who's our man? You know what I'm saying? All right? Jesus, Jesus, he's our man. Golly. Wow. I'm not ashamed. God's not giving me a spirit of fear or timidity. But the spirit of love and power and in the midst of a world that's confused and absolute running in uncertainty, not us. No reason for it. Amen. Regardless of what it looks like, that's all subject to change. Isn't it? It's 11... 10 after 11. What time we get out? 12.30? <laughs> and all the church said, no! <laughs> shame on y'all. I love you. <laughs> I do the same thing. I said, Pete, come on. <laughs> y'all don't tell him. I said, oh, it's on recording. <laughs> But wow, is it so serious. Attention. Who's got your attention? Constant, constant vying for. Always. Just let me read you a couple of things and then we will close, I promise. Okay? Don't want to be found out a liar either. A couple of things that I've, I've ran across. Attention, here's some definitions that you probably aren't just filed away on the inside of you. <clears throat> One of the ways of defining attention is notice taking, notice taken, notice taken 
of someone or something. The regarding of someone or something as being interesting or important. Okay? All right? Synonym words are like observation, notice, heed, awareness. When something has your awareness, it's already vying for your attention. All right? And most things of the world make their appeal through the senses. You go back to the garden. That's where all that started and changed. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Make one wise, taste good. You know, all those things. Right? So, uh, it's also defined as the act or power of carefully thinking about, listening to, or watching someone or something. Especially directing the mind to an object. Especially directing the mind to an object. So there's, over here, over here. You know, a vibe for your attention. Right? And, and you and I have to determine what's the source of our individual sensory cues. Okay? What's the source of your sensory cues that, that eventually uh, send signals to me that generate my attention? All right? Well, what, what are the tuning properties that uh, are necessary to get my attention? And again, I don't want to rely on senses. Spiritual perceptors. Perceptors. Okay? Spiritual acuity. You understand? And that means a deliberate intention on, you've heard it said here so many, many times, thank God, in this house, of listening from the inside. Okay? And, and, and I'll just show you again how faithful God is, and I'll reference back what I said at the beginning, when I'm out mowing, and my body's making noise, and that mower's making noise, you know, and I, can't, I couldn't hear Jane if she'd step out on the porch and go, Honey! But on the inside, I heard God say, Let me talk to you about marring the image. And how it cost one of my best. You know? Don't you think that I don't take it very personal when the enemy comes against the image of God in the earth. Okay? So. Spiritual, sensory, perceptors. Work on them. And I'm going to tell you how that happened for me, just like it always does. What does Jude say? I would give you a clue and say in chapter 1. <laughs> How many chapters are in Jude? 1. one. <laughs> okay. He says, building up yourselves. And you know, the world's just, oh gosh, let me get down here. Okay. Let me do some of these. Let me do some of these. Let me do some of these. And I try to do some of that too because I think it's wise. Okay. Some of that. Because I think it's wise. But that's not what he's talking about. But he is talking about going through an exercise that will benefit you. That will strengthen you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. Doesn't matter about this when it comes to that. Because though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. And the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. Anybody in here packing? You either understand that verbiage or you don't. And I'll leave it at that. Okay? 
I know several that are. But I know more that are packing the Word of God. And don't just have a weapon, but they got one chambered all the time. Do you know what I mean by that? Don't let the Word of God depart from your mouth. That is your weapon. Okay? Uh, last thing, because I said, this is. Attention is the taking possession by the mind in clear and vivid form of one out of several simultaneous objects. Taking possession by the mind in clear and vivid form of one out of several simultaneous objects. Okay? Or, you ever heard it said this way? Well, let's talk along this train of thought. I got to leave you with that, don't I, Jane? Okay? You ever heard that said? Somebody respond. This train of thought? Well, I'm going to show you a God thing. And I know it's God because, boy, I just, I jumped on that train. I didn't know more than start talking train of thought, train of thought. Remember Isaiah 55? Your thoughts are not mine. I'm going to give you my thoughts. So you can get on this train. What's a train? It's a vehicle designed for transportation to carry you to a destination. That's exactly what the Lord told me. I ain't smart enough to know that. I should, but I didn't. Before yesterday, I didn't know that. I never thought about train of thought. It is a vehicle, okay, that you can get into that is a train of thought that will transport you to a specific destination. And along that pathway to get to that destination, there may be multiple stops where other people have determined, that's my destination, I'm getting off here. Do you understand what I'm talking about now? Okay? You get on the right train. You determine, according to the Word of God, your destination. And that train will stop at multiple places that you could possibly get off of. Don't you dare get off there if that ain't your destination. Don't you do it. You stay on that train till you get to your destination. And that thought that you pre-established that lines up with the Word of God, it'll get you there. Think about that. And it may just save your life. And you know what else? You can look through the Scriptures in many different places where the miraculous still spitting. Where the miraculous was performed by God because power to believe and receive was present. And almost every time you see that, Many believed as a result. Okay? So you can, you, can, you can put down the lie of the enemy that will come in the midst of your hour of need and you've got your petition out before God based on His Word and the enemy shows up to steal that Word by saying, that's selfish of you. But no, let me come back to you with the Word of God. Let this be mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Think not every man on his own needs. So don't you come at me without being selfish. This is for me and my household. But every man also on the needs of others. Many naysayers. Many onlookers. Many who walk at a distance. Are just waiting to see 
I know where they go to church. I know a little bit about what they say. I know a little bit about the fact that they are not just mediocre in their belief. I know they're not lukewarm people. I know they're not cold. I know they're hot and they're fervent. But I haven't seen a demonstration in spirit of power yet. You hold fast. Because God wants many to believe. That's my desire now. God demonstrates your spirit and power for all those who are hanging in the balance, who are standing on a slippery bank. Get in the water. If this is what it takes, so be it. Amen. May God get the glory. And He will. He don't want to share it with anybody, including you or me. But He does want it to be on us. Doesn't He? Okay? I've spent too much of my life being mediocre. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of myself settling for that. And in the midst of the heat of the storm and the noise of the enemy, let God arise. Let God arise. Let Him. Allow Him. Work with Him. It's God who's working in you and me both to will and to do His good pleasure. And that always results in my and your best interest. Amen? Ooh-ah! I heard it, Lord. I understand it. I'm stepping forward to acknowledge here am I. Amen. Thank you for your attention. Father, I thank you that you bless us indeed. You enlarge our territory. Your hands with us to keep us from evil so that we do not cause pain. And I thank you for blessing us and keeping us and for making your face to shine upon us and being gracious unto us. You lift up your countenance upon us and you give us peace. So, Lord, we gladly invite you to rise up, let your enemies be scattered, and let those who hate you flee before you. Amen. Amen. Amen.